Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this is lesson four um, called Rational Exponents. And again, there's two parts. So this is part one. Um, essentially what we're talking about when we say rational exponents is we mean that they are going to be fractions. So the exponents are going to be fractions or they might be a decimal that you need to turn into a fraction. Uh, but it's not just going to be a number. Um, it's going to be something a little bit different about it. This first little bit I'm going to try to explain to you um, why that is, show it, um, kind of prove it to you. So we know that um, you know if you've got two apples multiplied together that equals 36, um, just like the apples could equal x. Um, that means that uh, for our first blank um, must be 6 uh, because 6 is the square root of 36. 6 square root of 36. So those would be the first three blanks to fill in. Now, remember that when we have x to the power of n, so that's just a number, times x to the power of m, a different number, um, it's shown as x to the power of n plus n. M. So we add the two exponents together. So I'm going to use these two kind of rules that we know. When you multiply two things together, uh, they're a square root uh, of, another, of a number. And when you multiply two things together, you add the exponents. I'm going to use those two rules to show you why, um, how, how to do these fractional exponents. So if you have 5 times a half, uh, sorry, five to the power of a half, that should be, multiplied by five to the power of a half. We know that if we add their exponents together, we would get five to the power of one, which is equal to five. What two other things do you know that if you multiply them together would get five? Well, the square root of five times the square root of five also equals five. So that means that these two are equivalent expressions. 5 to the power of a half, so this is um, written on the right side, there's the therefore sign. Uh, 5 to the power of a half is equal to the square root of 5. Um, we can do the same thing with a third root. Um, if we have a third root of something, that means we need to multiply something by itself three times, the third root of itself by it three times. So if we have 6 to the power of a third times 6 to the power of a third times 6 to the power of a third, which is what you guys have as your second line uh, in the applying products of power law, um, we would add up all the exponents, and that would equal 6 to the power of 1, which is equal to 6. It's kind of what we would expect. Um, so then what three things multiplied together would also get us 6? Well, the third root of 6 times the third root of 6 times the third root of 6 would also get us 6. Therefore, um, 6 to the power of a third is equal to the third root of 6. So anytime you have a fraction, you take the bottom number, and that's the um, index of your root. Let's do one more. We've got 9. You can't see that, probably. Let's move this up. We have 9 to the power of a quarter times 9 to the power of a quarter times 9 to the power of a quarter times 9 to the power of a quarter. And I need four of them because you add up their fractions to get 9 to the power of 1, which is equal to 9. So that means that we need to multiply the fourth root of 9 by itself four times to get that. The fourth root of 9 times the fourth root of 9 times the fourth root of 9 times the fourth root of 9 is equal to 9. So since they're equivalent expressions, one of these must equal one of these. Therefore, 9 to the power of a quarter is equal to the fourth root of 9. So it is that easy. If you see a fraction, you take the bottom, the denominator of that fraction, and you put it um, as your index of the radical uh, and see if you can then solve the problem that way. Uh, so 
In other words, raising a number to the exponent of a half is equivalent to taking the square root of that number. Uh, if you raise the number to the exponent one third, that's the equivalent of taking the cube root of that number. If you're uh, taking it to the exponent one fourth, that is the fourth root. And then that will continue on no matter what the number n is. Uh, so if you raise the number to the exponent one over n, you would have the nth root, whatever. However number you far you want to go, you can do that. It's not a problem. We're going to mostly be focusing on square roots, cube roots, and fourth roots. There might be one or two fifth roots, but other than that, that's what we'll be focusing on. So let's get down to some problems here. When n is a natural number and x is a rational number, ah, that's just a math way to say it, x is equal to 1 over n. So it's just a reminder that when you take the n, you can move it to the index of uh, the radical. Let's just do some examples for what you actually need to know. We've got 27 to the power of 1 third. So since I have a third, I know that the index of my radical is going to be 3. So this is the same as saying the third root of 27. And the third root of 27 is something that I actually know. 3 times 3 times 3 gets us uh, 27. So that means uh, this is equal to 3. And it seems, it seems a lot more daunting than it is. But that is the answer. The uh, 27 to the power of a third is equal to 3. If we have 0.49 to the power of a half. Now, um, we do not like decimals anymore. Decimals are not our friend. We like fractions. Fractions are great. So we are going to turn this decimal first and foremost into a fraction. And we've done that before. We move the decimal over two places to make this 49. And then you need to put it over 100. 49 divided by 100 is the same as 0.49. So we really haven't changed anything. So we're left with 49 over 100 all to the power of a half. Now the half means that it's a square root. So we're going to write this as the root of 49 over the root of 100. And we know both of those. 7 out of 10. That is the answer. 0 0.49 to the power of a half is actually 7 tenths. Not too bad. Um, let's try a couple more. We have negative 64 to the power of 1 third. So we're going to be taking the cube root of negative 64. So that would be the cube root of negative 64. And 4 times 4 times 4 gets me 64, but I want the negative version of it. So that would be negative 4. Easy. Uh, we're then Stepping over to the right to do 4 ninths to the power of 0.5. Now again, we do not like decimals. Whenever we see decimals now, we're going to turn them into fractions. Uh, so we take a half uh, as a decimal and we write it as a fraction. So this is 4 over 9 to the power of a half. And now I know that a half is actually the square root of both of these numbers. So I take the root of 4 divided by the root of 9. And I actually know both of those. So that's 2 and that's 3. So we're left with 2 thirds for our answer. Um, sometimes something will look daunting. But when you take a couple of steps, you see that there are pieces of it that you know. So 4 and 9 are very, very common numbers for us. 64 should be getting common. 49 and 27, 100. These are all numbers that we should be able to square root or cube root um, fairly easily at this point in the course. Uh, if you can't yet, no problem. Just keep practicing and know that we'll need to as we keep going here. Uh, let's go. Ah, okay, so there's some try it on your owns. Um, you can try those four on your own and uh, then hit play and we'll go through them. If you want to do a couple and then hit play and pause again, that sounds like a good idea as well. Um, on your screen, you can see the first two, and you can see the second two. 
So go ahead and pause it wherever you need to to review those questions, and then we'll do them together. Okay, let's do this. We have the third root. I'm skipping a step, but I'm going to do it, sorry. So we have 1,000 to the power of a third. So we know right away that I can write that as the third root of 1,000 because I have the three on the bottom. The three is the index that goes in our radical. So this would travel to here every single time. Uh, I know that 10 times 10 times 10 gets me 1,000. That means the third root of 1,000 is 10. Let's see, we have negative eight to the power of a third, and I wrote the question out properly this time. That means that this is a third root of negative eight, because the three is on the bottom, so we have a third root of negative eight. And two times two times two gets me eight, but I need the negative version of eight, so it's negative two times negative two times negative two. That means that the third root of negative eight is negative two. Let's do a couple more. We have 0.25, I'm already shaking at rage at the decimal, to the power of a half. And I wanna turn this into a decimal. I know that 0.25 could be 25 over 100. Uh, I know that 0.25 is actually a quarter as well, so I could write this as one quarter. So this is one quarter to the power of a half. And then I know that that's the square root of both of these, square root of one over the square root of four, which is equal to one half. And if you were to um, try that out in your calculator, you would find out that that is one half. Um, let's see, let's do the last one. We have 16 over 81, ooh, I wrote 18. I'm gonna start a new uh, part here. We have 16 over 81 to the power of one quarter. So when I see a quarter, now I'm thinking, oh, I've got to do a fourth root of some of these numbers. I hope that they work. Let's try it out. We have then the fourth root of 16 over the fourth root of 81. And I know that two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So that means that two, is the fourth root of 16. And then three times three is nine, times three is 27, times three again is 81. So that means that our final answer is actually just two thirds. Something that looks as complicated as 16 over 81 to the power of a quarter is actually just two thirds uh, once we work it out. And we didn't need a calculator. We're familiar with these numbers. We should be able to do it without a calculator. Um, thank you very much for watching everyone. I hope to see you back soon. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.